yeah so we were discussing um, basically in the previous class we discussed intrinsic fluorophore and extrinsic fluorophore intrinsic fluorophore that is already in protein whatever there one amino acid like tryptophan another can be tyrosine then another like a intrinsic can be flavine right heme and all those right so all those are intrinsic which is already in the protein system giving fluorescence will be called intrinsic fluorophore and extrinsic fluorophore that we can attach to a protein by covalent bond like like any other fluorescent tag alexa or whatever uh, there are many which we can attach fitc for an example ans for an example these are called extrinsic fluorophore that can be attached so we looked at what are the application of intrinsic and extrinsic like a threat kind of measuring the distance understanding the protein conformation protein dynamics probing the local environment of a protein all these we can uh, use intrinsic similarly extrinsic fluorophore we can study the co localization of two proteins using extrinsic fluorophore how the protein is getting trafficked inside the cell we can tag a fluorophore to the protein and we can track it so that's extrinsic fluorophore <coughs> even measure the distance between two fluorophore lots of dynamics we can measure using extrinsic fluorophore after that we discuss the aspect of quenching quenching means suppressing the fluorescence so we studied the quenching aspect so there are two kind of quenching we studied one was static another was dynamic, dynamic. in dynamic quenching there is a time like a time constant involved rate constant involved so that's a dynamic quenching then then we also discuss something called green fluorescent protein gfp and its variant right gfp green fluorescent protein uh, and its variant like there are many proteins after that it has like the dose has been designed red fluorescent protein cyan fluorescent protein yellow fluorescent protein all of these we have studied and many of them are used for again co localization is a measuring the distance between two protein system and there are various application of green fluorescent protein so we can attach your gfp to any other protein and in, in next half of this semester you are going to probably do some experiment where we want to attach a gfp to your protein of interest and you can track it something like that you can design an experiment and do it so those we had discussed so today actually we discuss in the last class one of the important concept called lifetime i will start from there and then we will build up from here so lifetime what was lifetime kit right kitna time ye excited state mein bita pata hai right we excited a protein from ground state ground state ground electronic state to the excited state and it returns from there by doing some radiative transition it radiates light right but there are competing non radiative transition right quenching thermal relaxation intersystem crossing internal conversion all are there so in some case it can stay longer in some case it is stay weaker that varies also solvent the locality lots of things influence the lifetime that is spent so fluorescent lifetime the time elapsed between the activation of fluorophore and emission of photon of the fluorophore what is the time from where it goes and then it comes here how much time it stays in the excited state that's a fluorescent lifetime right so it depends upon local environment i gave you few of the example from one of the paper where lifetime we had measured so looking at whether the tryptophan is buried inside or exposed your fluorescent lifetime will change right so that's the you can measure basically looking at the fluorescent lifetime how much it is buried how much it is exposed like uh, not exactly the level of exposure but at least fluorescent lifetime give you idea whether it is occluded whether it is exposed what kind of other competing relaxation parameter are playing role in deciding the fluorescent lifetime of a particular so it gives idea about local environment of a fluorophore right where it is located 
So, you see here tryptophan is coming from one particular residue like a tryptophan. Everything is okay? Okay. So, it is coming from one particular residue or moiety whatever we have tagged. Now, depending upon whether this moiety is something like this or something like this, right. So, here you see it is doing lots of motion which is free, here it is restricted in movement. Now, these movement the local environment or even the buffer or the solvent media that plays role in deciding how much time it will spend in the excited state and that is a fluorescent lifetime, right. So, it actually so you see here we are exciting with a black line with excitation and then there are two lifetime here computing one of 0.2 nanoseconds. So, rapidly decayed and in another case it is slowly decaying. So, that lifetime is about 1 nanosecond. So, see slowly decaying ek mein jaldi. So, jaldi jis mein decay ho gaya whatever jal like decayed faster usko ye bata raha hai ki uske saath competing relaxation process are quite a bit right. That is how it is decayed faster. In another case it is decay slower that means less competing alternative path like a quencher like IC all those are there. So, that is how it is slowly decaying. So, like not only quencher, quencher is one internal conversion, thermal relaxation wo sab bhi contribute karte hai. Do chiz hum yaha par like separate it, one we call it radiative and one is called non radiative. So, if the lifetime is more that means, radiative process is more, more pro dominant. If the lifetime is less that means, non radiative are also contributing significantly that is what one can say it. So, these consideration lifetime measurement is very important when we are measuring distance using something called FRET that I am going to discuss to you today which is called fluorescence resonance energy transfer. Okay. You can only measure the radiative, non radiative is rest, right. So, you can see the radiative, non radiative whatever is happening is rest. You can measure the quenching rate by increasing the say quencher, you can measure how much quenching is happening. But the other one we cannot measure it. So, what we do? We know that total is like we know how much is used for excitation and how much we are getting from emission, rest has gone through non radiative right. So, that is what we know total say total we know radiative r and we know we do not know non radiative. So, if we know r and you know total non radiative we can get it right. So, this is uh, the fluorescence lifetime another important thing you can uh, use something called fluorescence lifetime imaging. You can using this lifetime you can image something inside the cell. So, that is also used intracellular biochemical reaction you can monitor by fluorescence lifetime. So, we will give some of the example try to do that. So, that is a fluorescent lifetime 1 by rates are written 1 by k f fluorescent and k n r non radiative process right. So, some constant of radiative process which is k f and non radiative process which is k n r collectively known as quenching K n r is known as collectively we can call it quenching, but there is a like a specific quencher term that you can rate, write as K q right we had discussed this. Okay. So, the major lifetime tau actually numerically equivalent to all the lifetime value you can like take an uh, sum over various fluorescent that is coming and that is one can do it. So, that is what one can write it, we are exciting it absorption, then induce emission and fluorescent emission one can find it out the lifetime. So, here are different fluorophore and their measured lifetime. Okay. So, various fluorophore you can see some have very fast decaying rate. Right. So, all fluorophore has a different property. One is quantum yield that we discussed, quantum yield ka kya matlab hota hai, kitna emit photon hota hai versus kitna hai. So, one is that property, another property is lifetime, lifetime also depends upon the environment, but there is an intrinsic property of, uh, of the fluorophore. So, some has very you, you see very short lifetime, some have very good lifetime. 
so like malachite green a reactive or uh, that has a very less and malachite green about 100 nanosecond the aura aura mine o about 130 uh, picosecond so these are quite like a different lifetime you have also depending upon the solvent your lifetime can little bit change so that is all about fluorescent lifetime right so it can be measured either by either frequency domain data or time domain data time domain data there is a complicated setup which is called tcpcs uh, measurement where you can single photon counting you can do okay so this is the architecture of this uh, instrument so like here is our laser input right here is coming here is a dichroic mirror photon comes here on the objective here is my sample kept right sample holder then light goes up emission filter are there then photon counted detector is there and that is converted into some digital count now here you can measure how it is decaying so one can find it out i t i 0 by e t to the power t 0 and t 0 is lifetime so with time how it is decaying so the time domain data involves illumination of sample with a short pulse like laser pulse and then measuring the emission intensity how it goes to zero against time that is what one can measure. Now the instrument or the experiment that we do for fluorescence lifetime measurement is called time correlated single photon counting time correlated with time it is correlated single photon counting so, each photon you are counting it right TCPS it is a little longer experiment we have one in SAP. So, this is basically um, it is a little longer instrument like this uh, uh, like whatever value that I have told uh, for fluorescence that is not true for this uh, this single photon lifetime counting requires more money it is a laser it is a longer experiment lots of optics and it is quite sensitive and also data processing requires some involvement. So, it is a common technique to measure the how fluorescence decay in the time domain. So, I showed you this data decaying, but how do you measure essentially that is what you have excitation pulse and then photons are coming. So, you are measuring each photon by photon right here you can see one photon came measure another measure all those measure and then you have a distribution coming like this. So, each photon with a time with a photo multiplier as it decays is measured and that correlated. So, here you have a time domain data which comes after many photon decay to get something like this excitation pulse just one excited and then emission you are getting by <coughs> single photon counting this kind of thing. All the single photon events are detected they are like as they arrive to the photo multiplier tube with a laser pulse and that gives you exponential decaying function in this experiment called time correlated single photon counting. It is used for measuring dynamic the fluorescence lifetime which reports on the dynamics of a fluorophore. Okay. So, so this is experimental setup like that is actual instrument I showed here is experimental setup you have um, I can here is a pulse laser right you can see it then here are some optics and then here you have a uh, timing electron here laser start samples are kept here and then you measure it using time photon counting and as I said it is a little bit tricky to do the analysis. So, there is a software which was developed by few people called maximum entropy method for, uh, for processing this data and that is essentially is used. So, here is excitation pulse here is a fluorescence photons are coming and those photons are counted now lots of photons are collected and then you have a time in signal like a uh, time domain data as signal intensity goes down number of photon y axis and time in x axis that is what typically you get it like time decay function yes mm, for excitation. So, excitation depending upon what where your fluorophore excites that is what you use. So, if you are using tryptophan you have to excite at 280 to 90 if you are using some other fluorophore you excite with that wavelength right. So, 3 foot uh, 
here. No, so with a time, as I was saying, it's a decaying function, no? So it reaches to maxima. So when you start counting, the, what happens? It reaches to maxima with some lag. And then it decays because now it's losing its energy by radiative process. So it's decays and that's what you are measuring. That's a fluorescence lifetime, right? As it decays, it decays with a time domain data. And that's what you measure it, basically photons. So it requires a little bit time lag to build up the maxima and then it starts decaying with time. Number of photons. Number of photon on y axis, time is on x axis. So it <coughs> builds up and then it decays exponentially. That's what you fit here to find the lifetime. Where was that? Here. So intensity decays with time. So this is the maximum intensity e to the power t is time and t0 is the fluorescence lifetime. <coughs> right. So I had given this example, you remember? Oh, this protein ka example. Right. So I will bring back again. This part I had not mentioned to you. I had only explained this part. Okay. So let us go back to this part again. So in the same experiment, we had combined the lifetime measurement of 2 tryptophan. You remember we had a 2 tryptophan, one in the n terminus domain, one in the c terminus domain, W7, 178. So these 2 tryptophan, I said it is a wonderful system because you can silence one at a time. So ek bar n terminus wale ko silence kar diya, so we are getting exclusively signal from the c terminus. Another time you silence c terminus, you are exclusively getting signal from the n terminus. So we had a W7. 178. Now looking back here, so here if you look at one time we have a silenced this one, we are getting only from C terminus. Another time we have silenced 178, we are getting from W7. Now, abhi ke liye beta value chhod dete hain. That's another parameter which sometimes I will tell you, not now. So now we are just looking at the lifetime here, nanosecond lifetime measurement of these two. Lifetime how much resident time in the excited state. Now this guy is, what was this? 178 mutant. So this is giving signal from W7. W7. So this is from N terminus, this is from C terminus. So if you look at the lifetime of N terminus, seems to be slightly higher than the C terminus. So that says that is C terminus will be slightly like slightly C terminus is slightly rigid, slightly rigid, right. But you look at where, where is the location, it is also not very buried in the, it is in the kink, kink of a helix, but this guy was more flexible. That is how you get slightly less time, lifetime of this respect to this value. Okay, so that's slightly rigid. No, like a lifetime is what? How fast? Right. So if it is so, how much time it can stay? How fast it is again? Right. So agar man lo, tum tum like just I will give you a crude example. Suppose you have a gold, right? And all of your friend want to have that glow. Gold sweets, right? Sweets. So all of your friend want to take it, right? You are crowded by your friend. So can you hold your sweets for longer time or shorter time? Shorter time. Now you went to boat house where one or two of your friend are there. How much sweets, how much time sweets you can hold it? For longer time. It's something like this. If there are a lot more to compete, you can lose your energy fast. So there are like a, that's what happens. It's a re relaxing. How fast it is relaxing energy. So in this case, crowded will relax faster than the uncrowded one. No, but, uh, no, environment. But environment ka matlab kya hota hai? Amino acid hai na? Wo bhi to environment mein hai. So if it is rigid, means aspas ke amino acid are surrounding it. 
suppose here is this guy, it is shrouded, rigid. So, as pass ke residue can take it. Hmm. No, you remember that I was talking in terms of quenching. Quenching may like if it is rigid, then quencher can access this residue less, isn't it? Quencher or bahar ke cheez. So, here we had added acrylamide. So, suppose this guy is buried here. Now, I am adding acrylamide. So, acrylamide can access it less. If it is something like this, I added acrylamide, they can access it more. Now, this guy is here, right. Now, its movement, its movement or the energy that it can hold will be slightly less if I am putting it here. That is what it is. Uh, region means it has more interaction with surrounding amino acid, with the external, external environment which is buffer, whatever quencher, anything, solvent and all those, right. So, that is, sir, uh, what is hmm? that is a lifetime. No, no, quantum yield is not here, actually you are right. Uh, probably that is an isotropy, uh, it is a sorry yeah phi is an isotropy that I am going to teach you. So, here also if you look at um, quenching parameter of this was here, here more or less they are similar ok. Huh. Now, that is sorry phi is an isotropy that I am going to teach you now. Quenching jada tab hoga jab wo accessible hoga solvent se right? Solvent se accessible. Ha. Suno suno. Flexible can like you don't look at everything with one spec. Agar koi cheez flexible. Let's look at here. I have. I let me draw it a tryptophan here. That's what actually is here. And one tryptophan, same tryptophan has come here. So, now kisko jada solvent accessible hai or quencher kisko access kar sakta which is accessed by this, this one right. This one will be less accessible to quencher if I add quencher from outside. Now, look at which can move faster this one. Now, it has to lose energy and if there are competition coming from its own neighboring residue. So, where is the more competition than, so here will be more competition than here if it has to lose energy to its neighbor. Here we have a less neighbor, here we have a more like here we have a more neighbor, here we have a less neighbor. Quencher dusra chij hai, lifetime dusra chij hai. Quencher are external acrylamide that we added, right. Here in the second experiment we are not adding any acrylamide. No, it is not, but in this experiment we have added external quencher to see how much my solvent, uh, how much my fluoropole is accessible, solvent accessible or less solvent accessible. So, quencher in this case experiment was added as a acrylamide. They can also be quenchers, that is right, but those are already there, right. So, these are quenchers are there already. Self quenching bhi hoti hai. There is also possibility of self quenching, but the experiment that was designed by adding an external quencher to look at that how quickly this added quencher can take the energy out. Is that okay? Yes. Quenching is accessibility, flexibility dusri chiz hai, accessibility dusri chiz hai. Haan, wo intuitive hai, but let us talk one at a time, because that is how you do many experiment. Quenching is accessibility, dynamics is not 
only with accessibility. Accessibility how external thing like a, a acrylamide can come and access that fluorophore. B से हम दो चीजें यहां समझते हैं अभी सी छोड़ देते हैं B से हमने समझा यहां पर वाट लाइक सॉल्वेंट एक्सेसिबिलिटी ज्यादा है रिस्पेक्ट की यहां पर अब ये स्ट्रक्चर में देखते हैं ये मॉडल स्ट्रक्चर डोंट बिलीव टू मच मॉडल स्ट्रक्चर में यहां पर देखो अगर हमने एक्रेलामाइड डाला यहां जाने की प्रोबेबिलिटी ज्यादा है रिस्पेक्ट की दिस दूसरा हमने बोला लाइफ टाइम दोनों का मोर और लेस अगर देखो तो ये बराबर है तो लाइफ टाइम इज हाउ व्हाट काइंड ऑफ लाइक एक्साइटेड स्टेट इट कैन स्टे सो हियर एंड हियर इफ यू ये भी किंक में है राइट इट्स नॉट बरीड इन साइड सो हियर ऑल्सो प्रोबेबली लाइक इफ यू लुक एट दे आर नॉट टू वेरी मच डिफरेंट देर इज स्लाइटली लेस हियर स्लाइटली लेस हियर नॉट टू मच सो दे आर मे बी वी कैन से बिकॉज इट इज इन किंक एट द एंड ऑफ एलिक्स स्लाइटली लेस डायनेमिक्स इट हैज बट नॉट वेरी डिफरेंट इज एवरी वन क्लियर किसी को और भी डाउट है लाइफ टाइम एंड क्वेंचिंग में आई विल कम टू थर्ड वन विच इज फ्लोरसेंट प्रोबिंग ओरिएंटेशन सॉल्वेशन री ओरिएंटेशन सॉल्वेशन सपोज वी हैव ए फ्लोरोपोर विच इज ए डाइपोल एंड सॉल्वेंट हैज इट्स आल्सो डाइपोल नाउ वी नो लाइक इट्स टम्बलिंग इन दिस सोल्यूशन सो देयर इज ए पॉसिबिलिटी दैट so here is a dipole and laser we have put that a dipole so because of this tumbling it can keep losing energy or because of reorientation it can keep losing energy and if you measure that measure that time wise one can measure how much reorientation of this is happening which is measured by fluorescence anisotropy anisotropy ka matlab orientation dependence isotropic ka matlab it does not depend upon orientation so here because this molecules are orienting itself in the solvent that's what one can measure how they are rotating or making motion the fluorophore how much rotation and motion it is making which is called fluorescence and isotropy measurement of this experiment is called fluorescence and isotropy so if you look at an isotropy measurement we are measuring intensity time domain intensity at two angle right two angle if you look at one at a parallel another at perpendicular and by putting in this formula one can get it fluorescence and isotropy so let's look a little bit more into fluorescence and isotropy so it gives information about size shape of a protein or rigidity of the molecular environment now fluorophore preferentially absorb photon if the electric vector aligned to parallel preferentially but as i was saying here is my em wave ka vector here is my fluorescent all the time it is not here right in solution it's changing its orientation so if i measure time domain the orientation change can be captured and i am measuring at two different angle one at parallel another at perpendicular so fluorophore now is changing its orientation now in isotropic solution if there is isotropic means it's all the time doing dance choreography so you get a average value you don't care about that right kuch aa gaya fluorescence measure kar liya but suppose i want to really see how this guy is tumbling then i need to measure how it is orienting in the solution therefore with a time i have to measure its orientation and that's how you have to do with a time measurement it should be done at two different angle and look how it is happening so upon excitation of polarized light one selectively excite fluorophore molecules and then absorption of this transition dipole right is measured parallel or perpendicular so this selective excitation we are exciting by polarized light in a partially oriented population of fluorophore partially oriented if you see partially oriented ka matlab ye hua kya right what is the matlab isotropic matlab this guy is all the time right tumbling so that means there is no preferred orientation of this guy that's isotropic and isotropic ka matlab 
देर इज ओरियंटेशन डिपेंडेंस राइट सो ओरियंटेशन डिपेंडेंस कहां इंट्रोड्यूस होगा वेर ओरियंटेशन डिपेंडेंस विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इफ माई फ्लोरोफोर इज टम्बलिंग हियर 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 दैट्स आइसोट्रोपिक राइट इफ माई इफ आई पुट माई फ्लोरोफोर सो दैट इट कैन डू ओनली दिस 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 does not go like this does not go like this does not go like this does not go like this. so then it's oriented right oriented now this orientation can come from where thoda rigid ho jayega usko puri tarah se ghumne ka chance hi nahi humne diya agar maan lete hain hamara fluorophore tryptophan hai right अगर मान लेते हैं ट्रिप्टोफेन है तो नाउ ट्रिप्टोफेन इज मोआईटी लाइक दिस ओके नाउ मोआईटी इज अटैच हियर सो दिस इज सपोज ए ट्रिप्टोफेन नाउ इट्स अटैच समथिंग लाइक दिस दैट इट कैन डू समथिंग मोशन लाइक दिस इट्स आइसोट्रोपिक देयर इज नो पोलराइजेशन बट सपोज इट इज समथिंग हियर सो ओनली से इट इज इन कैविटी थोड़ा बड़ा हो गया छोटा लेते हैं कैन यू सी माय इन माय हैंड हियर इज अ ट्रिप्टोफेन नाउ इफ माय कैविटी इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड सो दिस गाय कैन डू ओनली right it is possible so in this case if i have to measure it is mo making movement like this so what i have to measure abhi do vector hame chahiye right ek aise wala vector ek aise wala vector so if it is all the time here then this component will be zero if ye aise aa jata hai so this component will be zero agar ye aise rehta hai so some component will be here some component will be that's why we are measuring because my excitation is at one angle here so i am one measuring at a 90 degree another measuring at so that's why two vectors parallel and perpendicular that's what it is measured okay so fluorescence and isotropy r is defined by r ip minus like parallel minus perpendicular parallel plus two perpendicular and something called polarization which is measured by <coughs> parallel and perpendicular so parallel and perpendicular are fluorescence intensity of the vertically and horizontally polarized emission when the sample is excited with a vertically polarized light vertically polarized light we are exciting here measuring at two different angle perpendicular and parallel and we measure two quantity here one is called fluorescence and isotropy that gives orientation of my fluorophore and another is called fluorescence polarization so these two parameters are measured and that's what here you do so it is rotational dynamics one can measure for fluorescence parallel and perpendicular and you fit this curve to find it out polarization uh, uh, sorry anisotropy and polarization of a fluorophore now this concept is clear to everyone it's a two component we are saying right now you have to fit to find it out what is the polarization lifetime how how much is polarization happening this graph is a time domain data if you look at here is a time domain that's a number of photon we are counting same experiment that we did previously counting the photons when we are measuring parallelly and perpendicularly so if you look at two axis here blue and red we have measured this and we plotted the something uh, single photon counting we fit it and we get the polarization value how we get that's by putting the intensity here so measure the i parallel minus i perpendicular divided by parallel plus 2 i perpendicular that's a polarization dekho humne excitation aise kiya detector mein humne do angle pe dal diya ek aise angle pe aur ek aise angle pe दो लाइट मेजर कर रहे हैं फ्लोरसेंस का वन इज कमिंग पैरली अनदर इज कमिंग परपेंडिकुलर इज सो एट टू एंगल वी आर मेजरिंग इट नाउ व्हाई टू एंगल वी आर वी हैव टू मेजर बिकॉज दिस गाय इज डूइंग मूवमेंट लाइक दिस ओनली दिस ओके इफ इट इज डूइंग लाइक दिस देन यू डोंट नीड देर इज नो पोलराइजेस देर इज नो एन आइसोट्रोपी इट्स आइसोट्रोपी सो दे आर इट इज डूइंग लाइक दिस सो फॉर मेजरिंग दिस आई नीड टू मेजर वन परपेंडिकुलर वन पैरल so two channel two detector channel i have to have at 90 degree one measures like because my excitation pulse is like this so one parallel or perpendicular 
we measure the intensity and fit it and put the anisotropy which <coughs> comes out to be given the magnetic process value we can conclude that the given protocol is more rigid or flexible about this interaction but what we conclude from the polarization value a polarization val value is va like a more rigid and flexible kitna so it gives you measure of say um, like how much your fluorophore is getting oriented. So, what are the application of this fluorescence polarization or an isotropy? Suppose you have a fluorophore which was less mobile, right, and now it bound, then it has become more rigid. So, that is what kind of information that you are getting going to get. So, antibody antigen interaction. Polarization ye hai. Polarization ka matlab ye hai. Polarization, fluorescence polarization ka matlab hota hai. If you measure the parallel intensity, perpendicular intensity, that is what is fluorescence polarization. Polarization is not excitation. I think you are getting confused with excitation. Sir, actually Yes. Right. So, हाँ polarization value से ये हम conclude कर सकते हैं कि like a polarizability of this fluorescence is how much? How much we can polarize this? Polarize का मतलब क्या होता है? Right. So, so that means you, if you look at what is the difference between these two. Only two, right? So only two is the difference in these two cases. Essentially, it also reports about the polarization because why we are saying polarization? If you remember, we are now not giving like we are giving a polarized light. Polarized light ka de rahe. It's a say vertically polarized light, or here my fluorophore is like this. Now, my fluorophore is parallel, but it can move here and here. So, that is orientation changing. Now, if it is all the time like this, so that I by like let us put it here, this goes to 0, right? This goes to 0, this goes to so polarization is always 1, right? But suppose there is a factor which is contributing in the perpendicular direction right. So, in the perpendicular direction suppose this is 25 percent right. So, here is 25 percent contributing that will change the anisotropic value as well as polarizability value. Polarization will happen if both are aligned parallel, but if it is not aligned some signal is going perpendicular way polarization will also change more anisotropy will also change right. So, that is what it gives the how much polarization can be induced to a fluorophore by this polarized light doing the experiment. Beach may agar maan lo ki yahaan par aa gaya. So, what will be the polarization now you look at? So, I p is 0. Ah, so, 45 degree na. So, you can measure it. No, no. So, half will be there, half will be there. Right. So, 45 ka matlab, right, cos theta whatever, sin theta whatever. So, that will be, ha, bilkul. Okay. So, that is what rotational dynamics it gives. So, it has an application in say association dissociation of a protein, how, what dynamics is happening. All the time association is not like this, right. Association is like, it is exchange phenomena happening at say microsecond time scale that can be measured by polarization and anisotropy like transition happenings of protein is binding unwinding. So, that dynamics you can measure by this anisotropic measurement. So, these are few of the way you can do that. Here say depolarized light you have a polarization filter you polarize the light. Now, your suppose your molecule here you just look at enzyme and there is a fluorophore or thoda suraj jaisa dikh raha wo fluorophore hai. <laughs> So, that if it is doing slow rotation, right. So, here you have a polarization filter, here you have a polarized light parallel, you are getting perpendicular, you are getting emitted light remains polarized. 
Now, if it is happening rapid rotation, right? Rapid rotation happening. Now, what is happening? Your bond vector is all the time changing. So, you get parallel and perpendicular both. Now, one can see the polarization and an isotropy can give you the dynamics just from this example. You can visualize that it the measuring the polarized light after polarization filter gives you the idea whether it is slowly rotating or rapidly rotating. That is the that that is some of the um, application of this polarization and an isotropy. Is it clear to everyone? The another example, right? We are using polarized light for excitation. The fast molecular tumbling happening. You get a depolarized emission. Right? So low fluorescence polarization happens. If say protein bound, a tracer here polarization emission is happening. So high fluorescence polarization. You can get it because it's a slowly tumbling. So from polarization or say an isotropy, you are learning a lot about the kinetics, the dynamics of a fluorophore that is whether it is tumbling fast, tumbling slow, how it is happening. If the interaction happen or not, how do you know? This is the way. Measure the polarization in a real time, you can see at what time scale this binding event happening. So, this is the application of fluorescence polarization. I hope all of you understood this. If you have understood, I will take a minute and then you guys can digest and I will move to next topic. Okay, so, uh, okay, it depends, but actually these are two different parameters that you measure. You know, uh, we are here we are in low resolution techniques, right. So, you need to measure multiple parameters. Ek parameter sab kuch nahi bata sakta, right. So, the you measure multiple parameters. Jaisa tumhare body ka pura profile lela hota hai. So, we take various suspects height, weight, eyesight, whatever, whatever, something like this you can consider. They are complementary, but with one parameter you cannot give everything. You have to do lifetime uh, separately and isotropy separately. Lifetime is just you are measuring fluorescence, how it is decaying. Here you are measuring at two angle how they are decaying, right. So, that gives you, because here we are using polarized light. There you can do with unpolarized light. Okay, so let us come back to, I think all of you digested up to this much, right. So let us go to fluorescence, resonance, energy transfer. Ha, bound enzyme. Bound enzyme hai to dekho, yaha par bound enzyme hai, right. Compound enzyme mein bound hai. To uska rotation kaisa ho raha hai? Slow ho raha hai. Jab वो नहीं बाउंड है तो रोटेशन फास्ट हो रहा है तो जब वो लिमिट कर रहा है तो सारे डायरेक्शन में इमिट कर रहा है राइट तो यहां पर डीपोलराइज्ड लाइट उस इमिट कर रहा है तो उसके परपेंडिकुलर और पैरेलल में बराबर बराबर आ गए हैं राइट सो उसका ये बता रहा है कि एनाइसोट्रोपिक उसका बहुत कम है जब ज्यादा पोल वही दोनों में पैरामीटर में केवल एक टू का अंतर था राइट सो इसमें पोलराइज्ड कम है उसमें पोलराइज्ड ज्यादा है डीपोलराइज अगर रोटेशन ज्यादा हो रहा है तो उसके जो लाइट आएंगे वो डीपोलराइज होंगे राइट तो उसमें पोलराइजेशन कम होगा एनाइसोट्रोपी ऑफ कोर्स कम ओके कमिंग बैक टू फ्लोरसेंस रेजोनेंस एनर्जी ट्रांसफर एज नेम सजेस्ट यू हैव टू हैव ए रेजोनेंस रेजोनेंस का मतलब फ्रीक्वेंसी का मैच होना होता है ठीक है और मैं और तुम रेजोनेट कर रहे हो इसका मतलब मेरी फ्रीक्वेंसी और तुम्हारी फ्रीक्वेंसी में कुछ ना कुछ मैचिंग है तो उसको रेजोनेंस बोलते हैं फ्रीक्वेंसी का मैचिंग रेजोनेंस होता है उसी तरह उसी तरह फ्लोरसेंस रेजोनेंस एनर्जी ट्रांसफर मतलब देयर हैज टू बी सम मैच इन द फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड देन एनर्जी विल ट्रांसफर टू द नेक्स्ट मॉलिक्यूल दैट्स व्हाट इज फ्लोरसेंस रेजोनेंस एनर्जी ट्रांसफर इट्स अ स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक बेस्ड ऑन फ्लोरसेंस व्हिच इज यूज्ड टू मेजर द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू फ्लोरोफोर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू फ्लोरोफोर एंड इट्स अ डिस्टेंस डिपेंडेंट फेनोमेना अगर एक पर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस पर है तो एनर्जी ट्रांसफर होता है उसके बाद इफ दे आर गोइंग फार देन देर इज नो एनर्जी ट्रांसफर राइट सो इन फ्लोरसेंस एज यू वी सेड मी एंड दीपक मैं एक फ्लोरोफोर हूं दीपक एक फ्लोरोफोर है अगर हमारे बीच में फ्रेट होना है तो एक को डोनर होना पड़ेगा और एक को एक्सेप्टर होना पड़ेगा 
जो मैं फ्रीक्वेंसी इमिट करूंगा दीपक को एब्जॉर्ब करना पड़ेगा तभी ये रेजोनेंस ट्रांसफर होगा सो देर हैज टू बी टू फ्लोर फोर वन विल बी डोनर अनदर विल बी एक्सेप्टर एंड दे हैज टू बी एट सर्टेन डिस्टेंस देन ओनली दिस रेजोनेंस एनर्जी ट्रांसफर विल हैपन सो डोनर एंड एक्सेप्टर मॉलिक्यूल हैज टू हैव सम डिस्टेंस टिपिकली टेन टू हंड्रेड एंगस्ट्रॉम नाउ दी अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट फेनोमिना क्योंकि एनर्जी का ट्रांसफर होना है सो वेयर दी एनर्जी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम सो आई हैव ए सो वी आर एक्साइटिंग ए फ्लोर फोर लाइक दिस ओके एंड देन दिस गाई इज एमेटिंग ए फ्रीक्वेंसी हियर इज एमिशन ऑफ दिस सो हियर इज अ फ्लोर फोर वन फ्लोर फोर वन इट्स ए एमिशन इज कमिंग नाउ if the absorption of this fluorophore the second fluorophore is something like this and it emission is something like this then only fret will happen so that means the light emitted by the first fluorophore has to be absorbed by the second, second fluorophore then so here if you look at this is overlap integral so light emitted by first fluorophore should be absorbed by the second fluorophore for fluorescence resonance energy transfer to happen right so here is donor fluorescence like emitted light from the donor has to be right absorbance for the acceptor then only energy transfer will happen so whatever frequency emitted by the donor some portion of that should be absorbed by the acceptor then only fluorescence resonance energy transfer should happen so there are two condition this is the most important condition energy emitted by this has to be absorbed by this and they has to be on certain distance kyunki wo dur chale jayenge to wo transfer nahi ho payega so they have to be at certain distance and this overlap has to happen then only energy will be transfer so you are only exciting one we are only exciting here but we are getting emission here ye beech mein relay race ho gaya right we excited fluorophore number 1 the emission of this was absorbed by the fluorophore number 2 and that emitted a light and we can get an emission from the fluorophore number 2 that's what happens in fluorescence resonance energy transfer so here are various fret pair that are used for many bio experiment so if you look at these are donor these are acceptor this is the donor excitation acceptor emission right so um, <coughs> like a, what kind of laser because they give a particular frequency the alexa uh, fluorophore 405 is the excitation wavelength for this dye then alexa fluorophore 430 is the acceptor one so if you excite at 405 you are getting emission at 541 ha ek donor fluorophore ka bahut sare acceptor possible ho sakte hain agar overlap ho ha to wahi main bol raha hu na so वेबलेंथ का डिफरेंस होगा बट उसका एक्साइटेशन इफ यू लुक एट फेर इज इट एक्साइटेशन फोर थर्टी सो इट्स इमिटेड बाई वॉट एवर कैन बी एब्जॉर्ब बाई दिस गाई एट फोर थर्टी एंड इट्स इमिट एट फोर फोर्टी वन लाउ नाउ लुक एट द केस यर वी आर एक्साइटिंग एट फोर एटी एट नाउ दिस गाई इज एब्जॉर्बिंग एट फोर हंड्रेड फोर्टीन फोर थर्टी टू फोर फोर्टी सिक्स बट दे आर इमिटिंग at different wavelength if you look at these are shifting so still there is a like just let me draw try to draw it again i'll just draw only emission of the first and excitation so if suppose emission is this from donor e emission of donor now excitation can be like this right can also be like this can also be like this isn't it here also we are getting some overlap integral and that is possible 
that is what happens in Alexa 488. You have a various donor. Efficiency come ho sakti hai. Efficiency, huh? Because that is what is used for excitation. It is a donor is same in all this donor acceptor pair. 488 pair absorb kar raha hai. No, 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 just hold on, hold on. What I have here it is written 514, 532, these are a, their excitation wavelength. Emission is written here. It is emitting at 541, 553, 572, 610 तक ही wavelength emit कर सकता है बिल्कुल बिल्कुल तो उसको final emission 540 volt तक ही क्यों हो रहा है उसका emission किस तरह से तेज होगा नो 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 � so here excitation at 488, I do not know where is the maxima, but suppose this is going up to 630, here is my 610, okay. Now this 610 was used to excite, uh, where is that guy, 610, Alexa, so 610 is something like this, it is excitation, okay. Now, it is emitting where 626. So here is 6 and here is 626. So now what is your question? Hmm? Ha, batao, batao. So the, the, uh, you, as you can see, one donor, yes, Rasmus? Huh? Okay, let me explain you probably I did not understand your question. What I am saying, we have a donor molecule Alexa fluorophore 405, that is a name. That means it is a excitation maxima of this donor is 405, okay. Now in the second column I have a acceptor which is excited at 430, excitation maxima at 430, it is emitting maxima at 541. So here is the excitation maxima, here is the emission maxima of acceptor, of acceptor, that is what this last column says. So we have a two fluorophore, right, Rasmus, look at here, we have a two fluorophore, one we are exciting, it is emitting it, right, then this emission is absorbed by another fluorophore and that takes it and emit another fluorescence, okay. So now it is emitting at 441, that is what it says, yes. Okay. So here say example number 2, we are for in first case, your psi 2, psi 2 is excited at 488, right? And its acceptor is psi 3, which is emitting at 566. Now, in this second case, this psi 3 can also be excited, can also be excited at 488 and emitting at 66, 66. So, it has a broad range of the excitation and wavelength, excitation and emission wavelength, okay. So you can use these pairs for measuring the fluorescence resonance energy transfer. Now similarly, in your proteins, so these were small molecules that can be tried. In your protein, you have a 
like if you are using violet CFP sand fluorescent protein can be clubbed with a yellow fluorescent protein this is the excitation and emission wavelength 405 526 then like a curulene uh -huh. uh, 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 that's what I'm saying, it's a broad light, right? So it will be excited, that's right. But what happens is psi 2 and psi 3 you are saying. So, but then transfer, would I have to tell you that? Transfer. No, no, just, just hold on. Just, just hold on one by one. I'll tell you why. If you are getting emission at 566, right? 566 is not emission for psi 2. So, if you are getting emission at 566, that will tell you that this energy has been transferred from psi 2 to psi 3, and that is how you are getting emission at 566. It will be going to get excited at. So, that is what in this case, that is what you have to have cleaner system. This is one of the system where you have overlap. Right. So, many of the time I just gave you example, these are the fret pairs. In many of the case, it is not a very clean system. So, you need to have sometimes a cleaner system. This is one of not the so clean system that you can clearly see a fluorescence resonance energy transfer. So, that is why these are various pairs that you can choose depending upon your requirement, but this is not one of the cleaner system that you have a clear cut emission and excitation of the. Even if you look at in case of say you are choosing this kind of. So, there will be always some leaky excitation happening for the donor that will be there. That is how these are done with a laser light. So, many of the experiment are done in laser light because you are typically exciting at one particular, but you can use broad light as well. There will be some leaky transfer that already happens. This psi 2, psi 3, psi 3, psi 5 case may not be that cleaner system but there are some other cleaner system that one can use it. Even you, if you look at first case, your 405 and 430. So, emission of the 405 right, will be like a coming quite close to that one. So, 4, 430 will be already uh, quite close. Like if he, this is excitation is also slightly broad. So, in those case also it is not very cleaner system. So, jaha jaha thoda like if you see too close wavelength that is not a cleaner system, but these are depending upon your experiment, your choice, your availability you can do that. For designing a fret pair it is a big research right, you have to choose a wavelength and lots of involvement required for designing a molecule chemical synthesis and all those to have a cleaner system that is what research is doing all the time. What you can conclude? Huh. Simple experiment you do, take a fluorophore, you excite it, plot the excitation curve, then get a emission curve done, right. Now you take the another fluorophore, do the excitation curve and do the emission curve, plot it. Don't know separately, Karlia, you plot it, right. After plotting this experiment, you know how much overlap is happening. Now, tag those two on different protein, you know that this will overlap and then you can do fret. Pahle hi bar mein sapne mein fret nahi ho sakta, dono ko separately karke ya kisi ne kiya hoga, wo reference leke, then you can tag it. Also, you have to have a idea ki agar mere tag karne ke baad distance kitna hoga, right. So, if you know the distance that it is coming quite close because that is a four star distance that I am going to talk to you in, in few seconds. So, Foster distance will give you measurement. If it is going too far, you will not get any transfer. So, you know that this guy is going. So, it is not all the time that it will give you maximum, it decays. Suppose protein is moving, right, like this. So, one time it is closer, another time it is far. So, your signal will decay. 
So even if you see this fluoropore like this, if it is go far, your overlap integral that we are talking here will be less like whatever you have drawn. So that means energy transfer will be less and that is what is given until called transfer efficiency, energy transfer efficiency. So efficiency of a plate is depending upon distance that is inverse of the sixth power of distance. So E is R0 that is a forceful distance, R is a distance between these two, uh, a distance between donor and acceptor and E is energy transfer that happens. So energy transfer efficiency decays with distance, right. So if R equal to R0, energy transfer is 50 percent decays with this and this is basically used for measuring the distance between donor and the acceptor. If the movement is happening because protein as I keep saying, it is not a static entity. So, if it is doing like this, right, suppose here is my one fluorophore, here is another fluorophore. If it is doing like this, the distance is changing. So, if you do time domain fret, you can measure how with distance it is changing. So, you can see how what kind of dynamics it is happening. That is what fluorescence resonance energy transfer measures the distance between scientists ka naam tha unhone experiment develop kiya tha so forster radius and rate of energy transfer this is the distance at which energy transfer is 50 percent efficient like 50 percent of excited donor are deactivated by freight is defined by forster radius okay so magnitude of this dependent upon the property spectral property of donor and acceptor and it's given by this formula at 1 by td r to the power 6 now kt is the transfer rate of transfer and td is the decay rate of donor that we have already determined it previously and r is a again characteristic of a fluorophore fluorescent radius so using this one can get the distance measurement from fret great so what are the application lots of application of biophysics like a protein folding a study co-localization if say two proteins are co-localizing you can do it time wise like kitna close kitna dur a rahe hain you can measure using fret inside the cell if you have a proper apparatus you can do co-localization you can study a biosensor right something is sensing say i'm just something is you have a I attach a fluorophore and it senses and then goes comes goes so you can do a fret of one put on the here, one put on here and you can measure the distance how sense it is doing. You can two put two fluorophore on hybridization, measure how hybridization happening time wise or orientation of protein again orientation happening in the membrane right. So you can put one on lipid fluorophore, one on protein. So you can see how kind of movement this protein is doing inside the membrane. So in a simplistic manner these are the way to design an experiment for fluorophore right. So yeah one can measure now application to fret proximity of tryptophan to an active site of an enzyme spacing between hydrophobic group say bovine serum albumin shape and size of the pigments whatever conformational change happening upon substrate binding structure of ribosome right you can even put and measure it. One example I gave you ATP motor kaise ghumta hai that you can also do using FRIT one example I gave you. Many many things many structural dynamics lots of study you can do just by a simple experiment FRIT. Although you remember FRIT I told you it is a very sensitive easy experiment to be done but only it will give you limited information because only we are getting information from these two probes how close how far they are coming and going how what kind of movement they are doing so that's what but it's a good it's a good quicker easier way to get information dancing protein in this system whether it is membrane inside the cell wherever in the test tube you can measure using fluorescence resonance energy transfer okay great so that's a fret think a question last topic I will touch upon only I will not go in detail because that requires longer but I will just give you a, a flavor of that. Okay. 
So, the last topic I want to come, if you guys are still ok, something called fluctuation measurement, right, fluorescence fluctuation, ok. So, suppose I have a fluorophore in the solution, right. वो तो आसानी से चुपचाप बैठा नहीं है फ्लक्चुएट कर रहा है कैसे आ रहा है जा रहा है आ रहा है जा कहाँ से लाइक इट्स डूइंग ऑन ब्राउनियन मोशन सपोज आई हैव ए फोकल वॉल्यूम लुकिंग एट दिस ओनली दिस वॉट एवर यू सी एंड दिस गाई इज कमिंग गोइंग इन दो फोकल वॉल्यूम मैं यहीं देख रहा हूँ पानी में ये मॉलिकूल लाइक दे आर इन वाटर दे आर मूविंग हियर हियर सो दे आर फ्लक्चुएसिंग दे आर फ्लक्चुएटिंग कमिंग इन दोकल वॉल्यूम गोइंग फ्रॉम दे आर कमिंग फ्रॉम so if i'm getting a fluorescent measured for the molecules that are coming in the focal volume that will fluctuate because they are doing brownian motion and this fluctuation this fluctuation of fluorescence in tiny focal volume <coughs> is called fluorescence correlation spectroscopy fcs have you heard about nam name Now this FCS fluorescence correlation spectroscopy essentially gives lots of information lateral diffusion of a molecule in the focal volume. If the protein is associating, self associating, aggregating, you can look at how this guy is coming going in the FCS uh, focal volume. Again it has a simple setup, but it is a expensive one. Uh, you have a various lens laser and all those objective <coughs> cover slip you have a sample and then you have a small focal volume where you are measuring how much molecules is entering in this focal volume or so. So, you can measure various fluorescence done by these molecules when they come and go from there and then what you do basically you correlate the photons at time t and t plus tau right how much it is happening and with that you can measure a correlation function of this fluorescence with time decay and that essentially gives you fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. Kitna fluorescence t time per hai or kitna t plus tau time per hai that you can use for measuring the lateral diffusion of a molecule in the focal volume that is called <coughs> fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. So, there is a some mathematics I will not go in detail only thing I will just want to tell you, you are measuring a correlation function of f at time t and f change in the fluorescence at delta time t over average over all the time t. Only remember this and this can be used for like a auto correlation function which gives you idea about how the molecules are correlating inside the focal volume. So, it is used for measure various things. Uh, you can really do the dynamics, count the lateral diffusion, count the say protein self association, biomolecular self association inside tiny little volume. So, it is a really powerful technique, I will not go into detail. You can do various correlation function demonstrating enormous difference of mobility between buffer and solution of cytosol. So, you can see all the protein dynamics that is happening, how do you know like what is the movement happening inside the cell you can do by this, you take a fluorophore tag protein and you measure the autocorrelation function and when it is inside the cell you can measure it. So, see a cell is really messy environment, it is quite crowded right, whatever we do in test tube that is a different than cell. It is a tiny compartment, protein is quite condensed because there is tiny compartment that is happening, but still this technique you are just looking at that tiny volume right, if you look at the fluorophore and whatever comes and goes there that is what we are measuring. So, one can measure it, now many people do, uh, but you know the one of the pioneer in our country is Sudipto Mehti, I do not know how many of you know him. He is faculty in TIFR Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. So, develop many technique il including two photon spectroscopy and FCS for measuring something inside the cell. Like he measures the serotonin level, serotonin ka naam suna hai na, right? Inside the neural neuronal cell, he measures how serotonin level changes or dopamine changes upon like whatever excitation, excitatory neurons and all those. 
चूहे के मस्तिष्क के न्यूरॉन लेकर एंड सम लाइक कंडीशन क्रिएट करके दे ही मेजर्स वेरियस लेवल्स ऑफ डोपामिन एंड ऑल दिस ओके सो विथ दिस आई जस्ट क्लोज दिस फ्लोर सेंस विथ ओनली वन नोट टू यू इट्स अ रियली पावरफुल टेक्निक 